What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. This is BDGE, Big Dogs Got E Fantasy Football. I am Nicholas. We are joined today by a major friend of the show. That's Dr. Jesse Morse of the Fantasy Doctors. He specializes in adult and pediatric sports medicine. Um, I know you guys have been dying to get him back on here. For those of y'all that are new, we have Dr. Jesse Morse uh, join us semi-frequently throughout the summer and then in the season he's going to be coming on weekly to break down all the injuries uh, which players you should be targeting or avoiding in 2019 fantasy football based on those injuries uh, welcome back to the channel dr jesse morse we're pumped to have you and we're going to break down some uh, some good players and some some notable injuries uh, that are going on in the nfl today and we'll we'll let people know uh, what to do in their fantasy dress what's up big dog nation i'm, ex I'm excited okay. I, 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 got, I had to break out the uh a little Brady retro. We three weeks from today, real football. Let's go. Yeah, this is going to go out Monday. So we have everything fresh recorded today, have it out tomorrow. You're looking extra swaggy today. I appreciate the, uh, the extra effort to look good on the channel. I'm sure it's going to show in the engagement and, and the thumbs up and whatnot. <laughs> Speaking of some upper, upper echelon quarterbacks, uh, Brady seems to be healthy right now, but there are a couple other top fantasy options at the position that uh, make you a little bit weary. Let's let's talk about Andrew Luck first because, I mean, Andrew Luck's calf strain from four months ago turned into something with a bone, turned into something with the – I don't even know what's going on anymore, so I'm going to leave it to the experts that actually know about, you know, the body and the ankle and the leg and whatever. Um, what is going on with Andrew Luck? Is he going to be ready for the regular season? How concerned should we be if he is? Is, he, is this going to be something that, you know, hinders his performance for the first month or two of the season? Break it down for us. So here's the issue with Andrew Luck. May, April, May, we heard about a calf strain, not overly concerning by itself. These take about three to four weeks to heal, so it should have been plenty of time before uh, training started or whatnot. He started training in, in uh, camp, and he just didn't feel right. I only got a couple practices in and started complaining of a, a separate leg issue. The issue with this Luck story is kind of similar to a couple years ago in that we kept getting different tidbits of information and we didn't really know what the clear true story was it's not like oh he broke his arm and he's going to need surgery he's not going to need surgery it's like well all right he's got a calf injury or is it an achilles or is it a foot oh they called it a high ankle sprain then they talked about something called an os trigonum which is a little piece of bone kind of behind the the heel then they're saying uh, there's something called myositis ossificans, which you can get calcium kind of deep inside of your calf muscle. So there's all these different possibilities, but we haven't got a really clear cut answer from anybody. Ursay says one thing, and you have to kind of take that with a grain of salt. GM Ballard says a different thing. We've got beat reporters saying different things. So it's like, it's really hard to sift through it. Um, we, uh, we had the fantasy doctors, we kind of sifted through it. And, and, and Celine, uh, our head guy, is a foot and ankle specialist. Uh, and that's pretty much all he sees. So he, we, we kind of came up with a conclusion that it's probably calcific tendonitis. Okay, what is that? So calcific tendonitis, whenever you injure your, your body, your shoulder, um, a lot of the times your, your Achilles or your lower, or lower extremity, your body sometimes brings in calcium to try to heal it. Calcium is what makes up bones. But the problem is it's not supposed to be there. So my, our suspicion is Andrew Luck has some calcium buildup inside of the uh, Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon is, a, is the strongest tendon in our body, is very, very thick, probably even thicker than your thumb, uh, if you think of it that way. Without your Achilles, you can't really do much. You can't walk. You can't run, you can't plant, you can't get out of the way of a would-be sacker. There's so many things that the Achilles does that we really take for granted. The Achilles, as far as we know, is still strong and intact. But the problem is if this calce, uh, piece of big calcium is, is, is kind of in the middle of that tendon, it indirectly is weakening it. And if it's weakening it, it can lead to uh, kind of a partial tearing of, uh, of the tendon. Think of it as a partial tearing of a rope. And if you're trying to pull a full force of that rope on, on a half of a, of a tendon, a half of a rope, you're at much increased risk for tearing it. The, this is obviously all speculation, unfortunately, because I haven't seen the images. I haven't evaluated them. And if I had, we wouldn't be talking about this. The major concern is that he needs to be able to move regularly, well, and if he doesn't, then what do you do? 
uh, it, he looked really good in the video we saw that dropped yesterday afternoon. If you haven't saw uh, seen it, just uh, Google it. You'll find it. Um, he, he's doing uh, kind of those step ups where he's kind of running across the end zone. Um, and he looked like he had good mobility and agility. But at the same time, um, this needs to be reproducible, you know, 30, 50, 60, 70 times in a game. Uh, he needs to be able to step up, take a hit, um, and then repeat it seven days later. So um, it, my, in my opinion, we need to see Andrew Luck play at least a couple practices and then get in, even if it's one series of a preseason game before I'm comfortable saying that he's going to start in week one. Yeah, I was going to – I highly doubt we see any Andrew Luck this preseason. My question is, like, with all these differing reports, right, started as a calf strain and worked on to so many other things, is it, is it even possible that they didn't know what was going on? Is this something that can develop? Like, it seems like they're hiding stuff from us, obviously, because the new reports coming out are, are, like, muscles and tendons and bones. It's like, dude, you guys are getting an up-close view of exactly what's going on inside his leg. Um, is it possible that this is a very confusing thing and even they can't really grasp it 100%? The GM and the owner may not be able to understand it. The physicians know like, they should know exactly what's going on. I mean, as complicated as this is to describe to you all, it's not complicated to us after we, because we see it so much. Uh, the, the, the tricky part is just because it's there and it's annoying doesn't necessarily mean it's going gonna, it's gonna to prevent him from being successful. Uh, you know, a lot of us have stuff going on in our body that we just take for granted and we function, you know? So the question is, is it going to be a big of enough deal that it prevents him from being successful? The issue with the Achilles and especially this, if it's really thick and, and, and angry and inflamed is that he's at increased risk for tearing it. Right. We already know what tearing it, i.e. Kevin Durant can lead to. Uh, that is a very long year. Uh, so if he needs to have this surgically repaired, if it does not calm down in four to six weeks, that's the entire 2019 season. So they have to be really smart about this. Uh, I know they want to get him on the field, but if, if this is going to increase his risk for fully tearing it, you kind of have to figure out what to do. And that's, I think that's where they're at. And, and part of the issue is the owner and the bat and the GM and beat reporters, they're getting little tidbits of information because I don't think they want to tell them exactly what the diagnosis is. Cause then that leads betting goes crazy because of that. All the other teams know what to prepare for. There's a lot of money moving hands when we know more information. I think that's why they give these things a lot more vague than, than we'd like. Yeah, that's, that was my concern. It's just like, there's so many, altering reports however like you said the physicians would know exactly what's going on so the fact that they keep you know fiddling around and not telling us what's going on makes it seem like it's probably worse than it is if it wasn't a big deal they would just say they'll be back in a couple of days but it's been four months now so clearly there's something going on so um there's the the chance of re-injuring it re-tearing it or whatever so tell me this if if i mean i've had him in my elite tier basically with mahomes mm -hmm. watson rogers luck those four whatever uh, you know order you want to put them in um, if you're drafting today, I'm assuming that means you would, you would drop luck out of there. He'll, he'll probably move down in the ranks. Um, so where are you, I mean, if you're in a one quarterback league, are you even taking the chance on him because you don't have to I, entering the off season before we heard about the, any calf injury, anything, here's my RB one on my QB one. Okay. Huh. I thought he had that much potential given the calf. And now this and the fact that we're getting really close to games and he really still hasn't shown that he can be on the field, say he misses four games. Even if he is perfect in the other 12 games, those first four games is a big deal. Like yeah. you can you really don't worry about the losing, missing games at the end of the season. Uh, not so much as the beginning because the beginning is when the, we start the season. You start 0-4, you're pretty hard chance of getting making the playoffs. So the, the issue I have is that He's like a QB 8, 9, 10 right now for me. Uh, I'm drawing right. out my rankings right now. And, and because I just can't risk it. As much as I love him, I can't risk it. And, and everybody in his team kind of depends on him. Hilton significantly depended on him. He was Q, uh, wide receiver 45 without, uh, with Brissett in. Mack indirectly you know, depended on him. Funches. Ebron I think will be okay. Doyle, I don't know what's going on with his injury. They really haven't given us much information. 
So like Doyle played in the preseason game last night and he caught a I think he caught a ball or two. Yeah. So I mean he seems back to health, but until he's probably not. So we'll have to see. But yeah, I mean, I'm with you. If luck is a concern, obviously that hurts the entire team. And I hear people being like, oh, they're gonna run the ball more. It's like, but not having luck makes your entire offense and your team way worse. You're running less yeah. plays, you're getting less scoring opportunities, all that stuff comes down. So you have to factor that into the rankings and there's no one on the Colts offense that I want to take if luck is out for even four games, you know, before I mean, Mac in the fourth is probably even pushing it, to be honest with you. Probably around the fifth round is where I start to yeah. think about a guy like that. And the problem is people are going to take him before that. So right. you're, Someone you're else going to miss out him. on him. And which is why I, don't, I haven't ended up with luck or, or, or uh, several of these guys in any of my best ball drafts because I haven't done any real, real drafts yet, really, because of this. Like, I know people are going to reach for him, and I'm not going to. So I will just fade him right now. And if, if it comes out, we're good. You know, I missed out on but. I have a tendency to decrease my risk just because it's, this is a potentially big deal in a huge position. Yeah, I'm in a shitty spot because I drafted in the uh, the Scott Fish Bowl, which was uh, you know, that started over a month and a half oh, ago. Yeah. That's part of the issue I have with that. Yeah, and luck dropped to me in the third round. It's a super flex. So I'm like, okay, that's really good value as my quarterback. One perfect. Mac fell to like the 407. This was prior to any Andrew Luck injury news. So I got – I got luck in Mac is like the 306, the 407. I'm like, that's fantastic value for at the time. And now I'm looking back like, look, I'm in a bad spot. Luckily, I got Jacoby Brissett behind them. So I have some depth at quarterback with Kyler and stuff. But that team could go to shit real quickly because, like you said. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of I, – I really want him. He, the NFL is better with luck in it. There's no question. 100%, yeah. But I, I, we can't control his injuries. I can just tell you about what we think about him. But uh, they're very disappointing. I'm not ready to write them off for week one, but good Lord, we are getting close. Yeah, we are. I know. The, the injury optimism is just too high for most people. Let's move on to another quarterback that we didn't originally have on the show sheet, but you said, quote, unquote, I want to scare some people here. And that's Aaron Rodgers, the Green Bay Packers, another guy that we have in this top elite tier of quarterbacks. Now, he uh, – I don't think there's any significant injury concern outside of, you know, what he's suffered the last few years. And I believe he missed the last week of practice with – like back spasms or back tightness, nothing that I would consider serious. Maybe you have a differing opinion on it, but you're saying to proceed with caution on Aaron Rodgers, a combination of maybe the injury history and what you've been reading up on Twitter in terms of maybe him just being overrated as a quarterback in general. Yeah, there's a couple things that, so everybody just assumes Aaron Rodgers is still elite. Um, and it, there's no question he's a stud quarterback. And, and, and anybody who watches him play, you can appreciate that. He hasn't really been healthy the past couple of years, unfortunately, for just a couple of random injuries. He fractured his collarbone a couple of years ago and needed screws and missed half most of the season with that. Then he took a pretty significant hit last year, injured his knee, uh, and also, <laughs> pretty crazily, fractured the top of his tibia, called a tibial plateau fracture, but it was really, really, really fine, and they, they allowed him to play on it. Uh, to give you an idea, this is the same injury that J.J. Watt had, but basically missed him the whole year. Uh, but his was much more significant. Now we hear about a back injury. I don't like back injuries, predominantly because they have a tendency to linger. Um, if, 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 it's, if it's a disc, then these have a tendency to push on nerves. I see these. I saw three yesterday to give you an idea. These are very common. They are very debilitating. These guys need to be able to move. They need to be able to step. They need to be able to take hits. Um, and then you add in some of this new info that we're finding out. 538 has a, a pretty interesting take on Rodgers is actually struggling with certain parts of the field. I love Adams this year. He's my number two wide receiver. Uh, MVS I really like. Allison I like. I, I like Jones. So I like their offense. I just – I can't put him in the top four anymore. I feel like he's in that 6-7 range right now. Um, and I hope he proves me wrong. And I hope his back's not a big deal, but I, 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 I'm just going to give it a little bit of a pause and say he's not automatically a 2B1 right now, like, like upper tier yeah. 2B1. It seems like when you say the back injury lingers, I, I feel like um, people with back injuries, one, for a quarterback, I, I feel like that very greatly affects your ability to be accurate with the ball down the field. I think it's, you know, it, it makes you maneuver in weird ways physically that kind of mm -hmm. probably offsets some of your accuracy. And, I think like back injuries lead to a lot of comp, uh, comp compensatory injuries, right? Because that's such a big part, you know, oh, yeah. the entire core, right? Yeah. That's what makes yeah. Back, back is back, back is just so important, especially if it involves the discs, because the disc is what uh, helps protect 
the bone, uh, the, the, not only the bones from kind of smashing, but also the nerves. Uh, that's kind of the, if think of this as a bone and this as a bone, um, and the disc is in between it. If this disc is herniated, then the, the nerve that's coming out in between them is going to get squeezed. Uh, and that when that happens, that's what people call sciatica. That's what it feels like. So depending on how that is, I mean, these don't calm down. The fastest I've got them to calm down is like a week to 10 days. And even then they're walking around like they're, you know, crippled, like it's awful. So yeah. I just, just give a little bit of pause. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, he didn't play in either of the preseason games. Hopefully we get to see him out there in week three. They play in Oakland against the Raiders. So if we can get him on the field and maybe see him move, maneuvering around and striking the ball accurately, then we could probably calm the concern. But yeah, just another quarterback to probably um, not jump the gun on in some of your um, earlier parts of the draft. Let's move on to running backs because it was officially anointed hamstring season it's ha it's it's pull a hammy season right and we've seen so many happen um between hammies between calves right now we'll we'll break it down to three big running backs that are you know were popular third round picks but their their adps are kind of all over the place now fluctuating we have aaron jones damian williams both dealing with hamstring injuries and we had derrick henry with the calf strain now derrick henry we knew was going to be sidelined for about three to six weeks he hasn't played any preseason games Aaron Jones back at practice last week. He did not play in this last preseason game for week two. So hopefully along with Rodgers, we see him suit up for week three. Damian Williams did return to practice. He was out there last night. He ran uh, exclusively with the ones. He ran the entire first series. Um, and then they put him on ice. So Damian Williams, you know, we had a concern that maybe he came back too early. It looks like um, they're giving him the proper rest now. He came in and played. So it looks like he is probably over that injury. Um, so where, where are you at right now with Damian Williams, Aaron Jones? They're the hamstring guys. And then we have Derrick Henry with the calf strain. I'm, I'm glad that Damian Williams' injury was as mild as we hoped it had been. Right. And they gave him appropriate pause, likely treatments a couple times a day, eased him back in. And now you see that he's full, basically uh, – primary you know the, the the working with the ones and that's it at this point in time as long as it looks like he's given it his all um while he's still at increased risk for a repeat hamstring injury is decreasing slowly um with each passing day um and i'm not overly concerned about him really anymore uh for reference um I am very hard on running backs in my rankings because of injuries. Um, to give you an idea, Devonta Freeman is not even in my top 35. Um, yeah, to give you an idea, um, Damian Williams is number nine for me. So I like him this year. We know Andy Reid loves his running backs. Um, this offense is ridiculous as it was last year, and it's probably going to be even better with Hardman. And, and Darwin Thompson is definitely his backup. Hyde is I, if he's not going to be cut because they need depth, but he could, he could. I, I was just doing my write up this morning. I was rewatching before we hopped on this. I was rewatching some of the games from last night and uh, Hyde was running as a clear too, but I mean, the talent is just not there. He fumbled away a ball like on the second or third series he was in and Darwin Thompson just looked like a stud. So uh, I, I guess I'd be a little surprised, but I wouldn't be shocked if Carlos Hyde got uh, cut. So we're feeling good about Damian Williams right now. Yeah. I'm not uh how we feel. Yeah. I, I feel like we're good. I mean, there's always, there is still a little bit of risk, but I'd say 20%, something like that. Um, right, so if nothing happens, you know, if we don't hear any like re-injury or any retweak, you know, he's still got another basically two, almost three full weeks until um, yeah. week one kickoff. So if nothing happens by then, we'll be feeling pretty good about it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I draft so close to, to kickoff to, to, to week one because of these injuries. He, so many things that could go wrong. I mean, yes, even after week one, he's at a higher risk, but but it's still, it, it decreases with each week that he's actually getting full reps and full, like actually pushing it, not kind of baby in it. Right, right. So was, that's why it was so good to see him actually in preseason and not just, you know, getting the, pra the practice reps, but then they're going to continually sit him during the preseason game. So it's good to see him out there. Now, Aaron Jones is, what is that? You got a white claw over there? It's 10 in the morning. Good doctor. Okay. Uh, I thought we were, I thought it was claw season for you. No, I'm going to the gym after this. I'm getting mentally and physically prepared. All right. I hear you. Um, Aaron Jones. 
I love Aaron Jones this year, but obviously he's had a lot of injuries in his past and he's dealing with this hamstring injury again, back at practice, didn't play in preseason. The opportunity is just so great for him there right now because you've had Jamal Williams, who's been out for the last three or four weeks with a hamstring injury. Um, Dexter Williams is just a rookie who's looked fine, but it's Aaron, Aaron Jones's, you know, entire role to lose there. So Oh yeah, where are we sitting at with um, with Aaron Jones and his hamstring injury? He's back at practice now. So for you, what do you want to see moving forward in order to feel comfortable drafting him? I'd like to see. I'd like to kind of them to give him the the Damian Williams treatment when he feels comfortable enough to get on the field. Maybe it's week three uh, of the preseason. Get him out there, have him run 15, 20 plays, maybe five, six runs, maybe a target or two. Test that hamstring, make sure it's fine, pull them, put them on ice, and then let the backup sit. I really like Jones this year. Let's briefly review his injury history. If you've checked on my injury, my, my draft guide, I know it's like a novel. Um, but if you just want to check out some specific players, just, you know, you know, search for it and just do a little. Yeah, you know what, actually? Before you get into that, let's let's plug this in here. For any of you guys that are finding this valuable, obviously, one, hit the thumbs up button down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new, as well as subscribing to the Fantasy Doctors YouTube channel and find us both on Twitter. But uh, within the draft guide, bigdogdraftguide.com, Dr. Morris is doing injury write-ups on every single player that is coming into the season with some kind of injury risk. So he's doing in-depth write-ups on their previous injury history as well as uh, like a rating, a 1 to 10 rating of their re-injury risk for 2019. Again, that's available in the Big Dogs Draft Guide on BigDogsDraftGuide.com, as well as the Fancy Doctors have a draft guide on their site, which, Dr. Dr. Morris, you can uh, kind of let them know where to find that if they just want the individualized injury reports. Yeah, if you just want the injury reports, um, here's two ways to look at it. If you just want the report, it's, it's $9.99 on the FantasyDoctors.com. If you want to be a, a little smarter about it, go to our Patreon page. As a subscriber, which is the lowest level, it's nine ninety nine. You get the draft guide plus all my videos, my ranking, uh, my rankings, all of our uh, daily content updates, and that's for the first month. Uh, and you don't really need the draft guide after the first month. Uh, you know, the next month, um, there's other levels and stuff like that. But um, the Patreon, in my opinion, is probably the smarter way to go. But who, if you want to order it on the other one, that's fine by me. Um, this is very extensive. Every guy that I wrote up, 50 guys, is very extensive. Um, if we go back to, to his history, he's from El, El Paso. Um, he's 24 now, so still a young age. He was a three-star athlete. Um, he played at UTEP because he stayed in, basically in, in the city. Um, he had 301 rushing yards and four TDs in one game. Pretty, pretty impressive. Um, then he set multiple records. Uh, senior season ran for 1,700 yards at 7.7 .7 yards per carry. Uh, caught another 28 passes. Um, he feasted last year on uh, bad running de rushing defenses. 5.5 yards per carry is, um, is it's monster. To give you an idea, when Adrian Peterson broke – the record a couple of years, uh, seven, eight years ago, he ran at six yards per carry. Uh, Alvin Kamara a couple of years ago when he had his monster year, that was 6.1 yards per carry. People don't run in the mid fives to close to sixes. That's elite territory. Uh, so that's what the, this guy is capable of doing. Um, the, 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 obviously the caveat is he's had some knee injuries um, and now he's dealing with a hamstring injury. He had a hamstring injury early a year ago or spring training camp caused him to miss two weeks, but then he really didn't have any more the rest of the year. Hamstrings are super common in early training camp as you and I have talked about a lot. Um, I'm really not overly concerned about his knee injury. Why? Predominantly because it's to the MCL. The MCL is that, that, that ligament that runs North to South on the inside of your knee. And as we know, as runners, the outside of the knee is going to get hit this way. And if you're going to hit, it's going to buckle inward. Well, that's what the MCL does. It prevents it from buckling. So it's the most common injury uh, to the knee, at least uh, that's not surgically repaired. And most of the time these scar up and they do well. Some guys will wear a little brace. Some guys don't like to feel. Um, is he at more increased risk for injuring it? Because essentially he's injured actually both of them. 
Um, yes, but I'm not overly concerned. Even a bad one takes like only three weeks to get, you know, to get back. So like, um, his injury risk is not super high. He's on a, a, a really, uh, high rushing offense now. And in, in light of, uh, LaFleur joining the team, they were ninth in the league last year with the Titans and his coaching style. Um, you have a much better quarterback in the backfield that can spread out the ball, um, I personally have him as my 12th running back. Um, and that's, you know, and that's only because uh, I'm a little bit injury concerned, but he, but in my opinion, he could finish top five if everything breaks perfectly. So you have him top 12, even with like all the injury concerns and this hamstring going on. That's yeah. uh, it's pretty encouraging to hear. <coughs> I, I have a, a tough choice to make between keeping carry on and Aaron Jones this year, carry on. I would keep for a ninth rounder. Aaron Jones, I would keep for 13th, and that's probably going to be a tiebreaker for me, the fact that I get him four rounds later. Uh, I think I'm a little bit higher on Aaron Jones, too. I just – obviously, this next two weeks, um, seeing him healthy and hopefully out there will make me feel a lot better about that pick. But that's good news for Aaron Jones. Uh, I like carry on, but I don't. I think that team yeah. is awful. Same. That's, the, that's also the tiebreaker, just like, the fact that I'd rather have the running back for the Packers behind Aaron Rodgers than fucking um, carry on Johnson. And the, the offense is going to be slow. They're – they're going to like eat up clock. Their defense could be terrible and give up a lot of plays on the opposite side of the ball, time of possession. It's just, it, everyone loves carry on. Everyone loves the talent, but like the situation is really shitty. Yeah. I mean, if you're getting, you know, 30 to 50 less carries over the course of the season because of, you know, three or four carries per game, that's going to add up. Like, yeah. I mean, if they're equivalent from a talent perspective, so to speak, and it's all about opportunity and the rest of the team, Give me the Packers over the Lions. Sorry. Yeah, they, they should have a pretty similar role in terms of touches, too. I think they'll both get, like, you know, 13 to 16 touches roughly per game and then hopefully three to five targets, which would be great. So if you're going to do the tiebreaker, you might as well do the better offense there. And I think it's pretty easy to say it's Aaron Jones. So as long as he's healthy, we're good to go. Derrick Henry is not healthy, though, um, clearly, right? Because I don't even think he's resumed doing any team activities or anything. He might have been on – I think I saw a video. He was, like, on the sideline jogging or something individual. Still means he's pretty uh, – pretty good ways off probably before being high speed NFL level stuff. So he's been out for a while with this calf strain. Um, and this seems, you know, a little bit more serious than maybe originally projected or than just one of these typical hamstring tweaks. We've seen Deion Lewis run specifically with the one so far. Uh, Jeremy McNichols was a very highly prized um, prospect coming out of school. It didn't work out in Tampa Bay, but the kid is 23 and a half years old and he's doing a really good job in Derrick Henry's place. Um, so no real reason to rush Derrick Henry right now if they're, going to give him the projected workload that a lot of people think he's going to get uh, where are we at with Derek Henry because it seems like this has taken a long time and we have not heard a lot of positive news yeah I mean Derek Henry's kind of been a little bit forgotten yeah um, I wrote a profile up on him I'm trying to find it um, and and but the problem is like um, where so I, which Henry are we going to get this year his quarter, his coach is now in a different location. So are they going to run as much as they did? We know he doesn't catch passes. And now you add in this calf injury. If this was only a mild calf injury, he should have been ramping it up by now. Right. He's not. So we're starting to run out of time before you lose points. So at this point in time, I'd say if he doesn't start ramping it up in the next week, I may have to drop him a little bit in rankings. Currently, he is 21st for me in PPR. Uh, he finished 16th last year. Uh, he played all 16 games. A um, couple tidbits of information. Uh, he had the third most touchdowns uh, per attempt inside the five-yard line. Uh, ideally, I would like to see him with 20 20- carries per game and that could lead to 1200 yards and over 10 touchdowns but if this calf injury lingers and we miss him for two three four weeks throughout the season now you're starting to drop me yes he can go into beast mode like he did at the end of the season and he looked fantastic and he was practically unstoppable but if he's not going to catch the ball he's really really going to be dependent on these crazy runs yeah with with henry it's like I understand 
the, uh, the hype around him, why you'd want him on your team. Like his range of outcomes is certainly leading the NFL in rushing yards. Like that's a very distinct possibility because he could lead the NFL in, in terms of rushing attempts. But the red flags that surround Henry right now very much outweigh the pros for me because you have the cast train. As I saw you ramping up yet. You have a guy who doesn't catch passes because they have Deion Lewis still there and he's still going to be very involved in the passing game. Like, we don't know what this offense is going to be. Are they going to be better than the Detroit Lions? Like, you know, we talk about bad offenses. Like, this Tennessee – I mean, you're looking at uh, almost a quarterback controversy already. And the season hasn't even started. Oh, yeah. Saying Mar- Mariota's on a short leash. Anytime you have quarterback switching in the midseason, that's not good for an offense. That's not good for a running back. <laughs> Neither of these guys are ultra-talented that I think are going to lead a high-scoring offense. So, it's like, yeah, Derrick Henry could get a lot of rushing attempts, but he's not going to be involved in the passing game. He could easily be game scripted out. If this is a team that's switching quarterbacks, they could be losing. They could be in a lot of bad situations that make Henry come out of the game. So for me right now, I was starting to buy into the hype a little bit as Henry, maybe like a back end third round pick, early fourth round pick, which might even be too late for me to ever grab him. But this cash train just puts him not on my do not draft list right now because hopefully he'll start ramping up quickly. But um He's, he's back to where I had him in the beginning of the offseason. That's probably around where you had him, like RB21, maybe to like the 22-3 range, which is probably lower than you'll be able to get him in any of your drafts. Who, uh, just out of curiosity, because these things constantly evolve and change, at least my rankings right. do mentally because of all these injuries, and this guy looks better, and this guy looks worse, and holdouts. Who is your highest rookie running back right now? Um. It's Montgomery. I've had Montgomery at RB 16 or 17 for like months now. So the, like this preseason hype that he, he's, that he got from last week, I know I didn't change him after that, but I've always been sold on Montgomery. So he's been high for me. Um, I, I like Sanders a lot. Obviously he's going to start as a running back committee. I think I have Sanders ranked higher than Jacobs. I think they might be my 24, 25. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm not on board with Josh Jacobs at all. I just don't, we, we, we saw nothing from him in, in Alabama as a featured work, workhorse to, uh, to assume that he's going to be able to carry that workload going into the NFL. Yeah, I mean, uh, for, I'm, I'm a little different but similar. Um, I've, I finally bought into the Sanders train. Um, I, I think he takes over by week six, if not sooner. Mm-hmm. Um, as you know, I'm not a big fan of Carson Wentz uh, just because of his injury history. But they definitely have ridiculous weapons there. This team could be underrated and kind of sneaky like they were a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, and I, I, he reminds me of a young Todd Gurley, which is kind of scary. Yeah, um, I would say maybe even like a, yeah, a Melvin Gordon type too. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, Sanders is going to be legit. Uh, Montgomery looks really good. Um, I, I, I – I'm just not as high on the Bears, so for some reason that I think I have to kind of pull him back. Jacobs, I want I really don't want anything to do with the Raiders. Um, we know he's talented. He's going to be a three down back. That O line is awful. Um, if you're down by twenty, Gruden may continue to run, but most people wouldn't run. Um, so it's like, eh, like uh, it's not even like Jacobs proved it. It's not even like he's in a bad. He's in a bad situation, but we know, you know, like David Montgomery, Miles Sanders both did it in college, right? They both surpassed 1,300, 1,400 yards in scrimmage multiple times, at least Montgomery did. We knew who Montgomery – most of the time, like when we see these college players playing, that's who they are, right? David Montgomery is a guy who's extremely elusive, and that's what we're seeing so far in Chicago. He's a guy that can play all three downs. That's what we're seeing so far. Josh Jacobs has yet to ever prove throughout his college career that he can be a workhorse, and I think this is a very similar situation to Kenyon Drake coming out of school. You like his talent, but even in, in Alabama, his, his max carry total was like 90 in a season. He comes to the NFL, and everyone's like, he's going to be a workhorse. He's going to be a workhorse eventually. Just give him the rock. And you see all these NFL coaches like, that's who he was. What, what these players were in college, for the most part, translate to what they're going to be into the NFL. And that's why Jacobs is such a red flag for me, because we've never seen him do it. And you know, translating from a 50% player in college to a 100% player in the NFL very, very rarely works out. Yeah, I mean, we know Crazy Gruden. The last time he had a stud running back was probably Cadillac. And, God, he had like 360 carries or something that year. But, yeah. uh, and, and he would be silly enough to do that again. Uh, I just – I don't know. But Cadillac I, was also the workhorse in college when he was there. You know what I mean? Yeah, so different, different pedigree. I mean, 
the talent is there. I just don't know if he can handle the volume. Exactly. Um, that's, that's my concern. You know, and, and then throw in the rest of that chaos in that team. Nah, I think I'm good. Yeah. How many scoring opportunities is he going to get? Um, so speaking of the Raiders, speaking of former Raider, we have Amari Cooper dealing with something and this mm-hmm. injury kind of just recently came out. I mean, there was a report that it's a plantar, a plantar fascia irritation, which I believe is just plantar fasciitis. And it's then clear. another report came out afterward dealing with a strained heel. Now I'm not sure if one of them just didn't know what they were talking about and the other one was correct. Or if one of them led to the other one, uh, this seems like something low key that could be a very big problem and lingers throughout the year. How are we feeling on Cooper? First of all, what the hell is a heel strain? <laughs> is that not a thing? It's fake. No, it's not. I mean, no, uh, you could kind of say it, but there, there really isn't I like it. a. Specific... I, I love, I love fantasy football, man. I love the people that report these injuries. It's incredible. Like there, it, it's not really a thing. Like there's a lot of stuff back there, but. That's not one of them. That's just not a, a common colloquial term. Plantar fascia, if anybody's ever had it, and there has to be at least someone watching that had it, it is awful. When I have people come into my office that have plantar fasciitis, they are on the verge of tears, and they are so miserable. These people wake up in the, middle, in the morning, and it's like walking on glass for like an hour. It's awful the plantar fascia is a thick ligament called a ligament it's easier just to make it easy um on the bottom of the foot it connects the heel to the to the beginning of the the big the toes and the problem is it gets inflamed and whenever you walk it basically makes up the bridge of your foot the the arch of your foot so whenever you walk it, it it's like walking on glass or needles or something really painful if this doesn't calm down, it can partially tear. Or if it's partially torn, it's really painful. So here's the issue. You can't put a cortisone injection in this. If you can't, if you do it, it hurts like hell. I don't even do them because I don't want to torture my patients. And it's going to increase the risk of possibly tearing it. So that's not an option for you or a smart option. This is not something you can just put duct tape on and say, go. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. He needs the foot to do everything that he needs to do, okay? That's my pause with him. I have already drafted him a couple times in best ball, and I'm kind of regretting that. Um, If he can get this to calm down in the next couple of weeks, I I feel confident we'll be okay with him. How long does it usually take? Or is it it very varying degrees of of this? Yes, it it varies like crazy. And there's a couple other parts that could be part of this. This could be a nerve impingement, which is kind of above the plantar fascia that feels like plantar fasciitis. Uh, This could be a stress fracture in the heel. This could be a bunch of things. If you guys want to get a good gauge of what this entails, uh, log on to our YouTube page. And Celine, uh, who treats this every day, gave a good kind of explanation of what Mari Cooper's going through. And it will scare you into not drafting him to give you an idea of how potentially bad this could be or how mild this could be at the same time. There are guys around him that I would rather have because of this risk. I like Dak this year. I like Gallup this year. I don't know what the hell's going on with Zeke. But this can be potentially annoying enough to bother him enough where he just can't go. And that is enough for me to just select somebody else near him. Yeah. Dude, this first, the first three rounds this year is a f- absolute shit show. It's like, it's like a grand mine. It's just, it's like pick the guy not injured. Dude, there's like six guys that I like in the first three rounds this year between all these fucking injuries. And then you have the holdouts. It's, it's really, really crazy. So that's, mm-hmm. um, that's, that's pretty concerning from Amari Cooper standpoint. Now we'll see if there are any more strained heel reports that come out. That's really funny that that's not really like a used term and they just like report that stuff because, you know, people in NFL and fantasy football rarely ever know what they're talking about when it comes to injuries and they use fake timetables and just random projections of when they think things can happen despite having some of the best doctors in the world which blows my mind i'm sure the doctors like tell them the right thing and then they just say whatever they want to but it's kind of ridiculous um 
I, I think that's all we have for the injury list today. Um, if any of you guys, we'll bring Dr. Morris probably back onto the channel at least one more time before the season kicks off. So if you guys have other names that you want to hear um, their injury reports on, one, you could either head over to their site or my site and cop one of our draft guides to get the insider info on that stuff. Um, but drop a comment who you'd like to see on the next video. Make sure you are following Fantasy Doctors and Dr. Morse on all the socials, which I will link down below. Check out their Patreon page, which sounds like it is well worth the uh, monthly subscription price, which you will get throughout the season, which will obviously help you with your sit starts and stuff. Again, Dr. Morse will be on my channel weekly throughout the regular season to help you all with your sit start decisions and who to stay away from with injuries and, and that kind of stuff. So um, great episode today. A lot of valuable information, as always, with Dr. Morse. Big facts only! Hell yeah. Hashtag BFO, baby. So uh, thank you for coming on the, the channel, Dr. Morse. I'm looking forward to getting you back in here again. Sounds good. Thanks for having me.